In this video, we'll take a look at drug classifications. Before we get started, I want to share a list of the top 200 drugs. I've left a link to a Google spreadsheet in the description below. The first tab lists them in alphabetical order so you can follow along with my top 200 drugs video. I've made a few changes in the classes and indications of some drugs to make grouping and sorting easier. In doing so, I've made another list where the drugs are sorted by their class. I like this list much more than the other one because it separates the drugs first by their broader classifications and then by their pharmacological or therapeutic subclass. The color of the font indicates the broadest classification. Red font indicates cardiology drugs, blue is neurology, purple is gastroenterology, gray is respiratory, green is endocrine, brown is immunomodulation and inflammation, and finally pink is infectious disease. Associating drug names with their corresponding class color can also add another visual component to help with memorization. So instead of learning drugs by group memorization, we can sort and learn them in groups. Drugs grouped in the same class have similar indications, contraindications, precautions, interactions, and mechanisms of action. Also, drugs in the same class can share a stem, so we can recognize groups of drugs by their stems, which I've reviewed in my previous video. Drugs highlighted in yellow are C3 through 5 drugs, and drugs highlighted in red are C2 drugs. We can also filter and sort the list to focus on a group of drugs. For example, if we filter for just the cells highlighted in red, we get the C2 drugs. The blue font indicates that these drugs are neurologic, with just a few indications. Or maybe we want to focus on just the drugs indicated for diabetes. So we can filter the green font and sort the indications list A through Z to focus on just the drugs indicated for diabetes. It's helpful to see the different classes of drugs, especially those working in the same system, because it gives a good perspective of how drugs are related. So in this video, I'll outline a classification hierarchy for drugs. And a quick overview of drug classes. Drugs are classified according to the organ or system on which it acts and by its therapeutic, pharmacological, and chemical properties. Drugs can have multiple classifications if they have different therapeutic uses. Different formulations and routes of administration of the same drug can influence its indication, which may result in another classification. Classes can give insight into the properties of a drug, including general indications and even mechanism or site of action. Knowing what class a drug belongs to can help with identifying therapeutic duplications, possible interactions, and even more nuanced things like possible alternatives when a drug is not approved by a third party's formulary. More importantly, knowing drug classes can help with grouping drugs together, making learning and studying more manageable. The classification hierarchy outlined in this video is based off the anatomical therapeutic chemical classification system laid out by the World Health Organization. I've sorted and condensed the classes further to reflect a format that mirrors Goodman and Gilman's therapeutics. This format, in my opinion, is more fluid and provides a structured outline for learning. The United States Pharmacopoeia has another classification system that is much broader than the ATC with about 50 different therapeutic classes. If you want to learn more about either classification system, check out the links in the description below. The ATC classification system has 14 main groups as shown in the table, but I've condensed them down to seven broad classifications. The cardiovascular system and blood and blood forming organs make up the cardiology section. The nervous system is neurology, respiratory system is respiratory, the alimentary tract is the same as gastroenterology, and the metabolism section is included in endocrinology along with systemic hormonal preparations excluding sex hormones and insulin and the genitourinary system and sex hormones. Antineoplastic and immunomodulating agents are covered in immunomodulation and inflammation. The infectious disease section is composed of anti-infectives for systemic use, antiparasitic products, insecticides, and repellents, as well as dermatologicals. Certain classes found in the musculoskeletal system are divided into neurology, endocrinology, and inflammation. And finally, sensory organs and classes in the various section are combined into special topics that aren't covered in this video. In no way is this an exhaustive list of every drug class, but I've done my best to include all the ones you might encounter in practice. I've also excluded drug combination categories in which I've covered the single agents for the sake of brevity. This video also serves as an outline of what to expect from future content. I'll take a deeper look into each of these classes, including FDA-approved indications and off-label uses, drug-drug and drug-disease interactions, adverse reactions, contraindications and warnings and precautions, clinical pharmacology, dosing, administration, and clinical pearls. So without further delay, I hope you guys enjoyed this classification hierarchy. 
Starting with cardiology drugs, in the antihypertensives class, we have agents acting on the renin-angiotensin system, including angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors, angiotensin-2 receptor blockers, angiotensin-2 receptor blockers and naprilosin inhibitor combinations, and direct renin inhibitors. Beta-blocking agents include beta blockers with alpha blockade, selective beta blockers, and non-selective beta blockers. Calcium channel blockers include dihydropyridine, benzothiazepine, and phenylalkylamine calcium channel blockers. Centrally acting antiadrenergics include centrally acting alpha agonist and rawolfia alkaloids. There are also peripherally acting antiadrenergics or alpha adrenoreceptor antagonist or alpha blockers. The different types of diuretics include loop diuretics, low ceiling diuretics including thiazide diuretics, and low ceiling diuretics excluding thiazides or thiazide-like diuretics. Potassium sparing diuretics include aldosterone antagonist and other potassium sparing diuretics. We also have osmotic diuretics and vasopressin antagonists. Carbonic anhydrase inhibitors are also classified as a subgroup of diuretics. Finishing off the antihypertensives branch, we have peripheral vasodilators and ganglion blockers. Under cardiac therapy, we have antianginal agents including nitrites and nitrates and other antianginal agents. Antiarrhythmics are composed of class 1A, 1B, 1C, 2, 3, 4, and miscellaneous antiarrhythmics. And then we have anticholinergics for cardiac conditions cardiac glycosides, cardiac stimulants excluding cardiac glycosides including cardiac dopaminergic agents, and cardiac stimulants excluding dopaminergic agents. Ductus arteriosus agents include agents used for closure of a patent ductus arteriosus and agents used to maintain a patent ductus arteriosus. And then we have guanylate cyclase stimulants and positive inotropic agents. Finishing off cardiac therapy, we have pulmonary hypertension agents including endothelin receptor antagonists, guanylate cyclase stimulants, phosphodiesterase inhibitors, prostacyclin analogs, or receptor agonists. Under cerebral and peripheral vasotherapeutics, we have calcium antagonists with cerebral activity and cerebral and peripheral vasotherapeutics excluding calcium antagonists with cerebral activity. There are also vasopressors and antivaricosis agents or systemic varicose therapy. Lipid modifying agents or antilipemics include HMG CoA reductase inhibitors, fibric acid derivatives or fibrates, bile acid sequestrants and ion exchange resins, omega 3 dyslipidemic agents, sterol transporter inhibitors, proprotein convertase subtilisin kexin type 9 inhibitors, antilipemic nicotinic acid and derivatives, adenosine triphosphate citrate lyase inhibitors, apolipoprotein B synthesis inhibitors, and microsomal triglyceride transfer protein inhibitors. Under antihemorrhagics, we have antifibrinolytics, including proteinase inhibitors, consisting of coagulation inhibitors and inhibitors of the calicrine kinin system. There are also synthetic antifibrinolytics. Vitamin K and other hemostatics include blood coagulation factors, systemic fibrinogens, local hemostatics, other hemostatics, thrombopotin receptor agonists, tissue sealing agents, and vitamin K products. Under antithrombotic agents, we have vitamin K antagonists, direct thrombin inhibitors, factor XA inhibitors, fibrinolytics, heparins, including unfractionated heparins, and fractionated heparins. Platelet aggregation inhibitors include adenosine diphosphate receptor antagonists and cyclooxygenase inhibitor platelet aggregation inhibitors. Finishing off platelet aggregation inhibitors, we have glycoprotein 2B3A antagonist platelet aggregation inhibitors, platelet CAMP enhancing platelet aggregation inhibitors, platelet reducing agents, and protease activated receptor 1 antagonist. Under anti-anemic agents, we have cyanocobalamin or vitamin B12 and analog supplements, erythropoietin agents, folic acid and derivative supplements, iron supplements, and other anti-anemic agents. Under hereditary angioedema agents, we have agents for acute treatment of hereditary angioedema and agents for hereditary angioedema prophylaxis. There are also sickle cell disease agents, other cardiovascular agents, and all other hematological agents, including 
hyaluronidase, and other hematological agents. Moving on to neurology drugs, in the psychoanalytics class, there are antidepressants and mood stabilizers consisting of selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, selective norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, antidepressant augmentation agents, cyclic antidepressants, including tricyclic antidepressants, tetracyclic antidepressants, and other cyclic antidepressants. There are also monoamine oxidase inhibitor antidepressants, miscellaneous antidepressants, mood stabilizers, and GABA modulator antidepressants. Narcolepsy agents include stimulant narcolepsy agents, miscellaneous neurotransmitter modulators, dopamine norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor narcolepsy agents, GABA receptor modulators, histamine receptor modulators, and xanthine psychoanalyptics. ADHD agents include non-stimulant, stimulant, and other psychostimulants, including amphetamines and psychostimulants, psychostimulants methylphenidate derivatives, and there are also ADHD adjunct agents. Psycholeptics include antipsychotics that are first-generation antipsychotics or second-generation antipsychotics, including multi-acting receptor-targeted antipsychotics, serotonin dopamine antagonist, partial dopamine receptor agonist, inverse serotonin agonist and antagonist, there are also anxiolytics, including benzodiazepines and non-benzodiazepines. Sedatives or hypnotics include benzodiazepines, non-benzodiazepine benzodiazepine receptor agonist, or your Z drugs, barbiturates, melatonin receptor agonist, orexin receptor antagonist, and other sedatives. Anticonvulsants include benzodiazepines, barbiturates, carbamates, carboxamides, gabapentinoids, GABA inhibitors, hydantoins, succinamides, synaptic vesicle glycoprotein 2A inhibitors, valproic acid and derivatives, and miscellaneous. Anti-Alzheimer agents include cholinesterase inhibitors and MDA receptor antagonists. Anti-Parkinson agents include dopamine agonists, dopamine precursors, COMT inhibitors, an MDA receptor antagonist, MAO type B inhibitors, adenosine receptor antagonist, and anticholinergics. Analgesics include analgesics with antipyretic activity, anti-migraine agents including selective serotonin 1B, 1D receptor agonist, selective serotonin 1F receptor agonist, calcitonin gene-related peptide antagonist, ergot alkaloids, and other anti-migraine agents. There are also opiate agonist and related agents, including opioid agonist, mixed opiate agonist antagonist, and other analgesics. Muscle relaxants include centrally acting muscle relaxants, peripherally acting muscle relaxants, neuropathic pain and peripheral neuropathy agents, and other neuromuscular blockers. We also have multiple sclerosis agents. There are also spinal muscular atrophy agents, or gene replacement therapy for spinal muscular atrophy, and RNA targeted therapy for SMA, including antisense oligonucleotides for SMA, and small molecules for SMA. We also have agents for amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, and agents for neuromyelitis optical. Anesthetics include general anesthetics consisting of barbiturate anesthetics, benzodiazepine anesthetics, opiate anesthetics, inhalation general anesthetics, and other general anesthetics. Local anesthetics include amide local anesthetics and ester local anesthetics. And finally, there are other CNS agents, including agents for opioid-related disorders, consisting of agents for opioid dependence, agents for opioid toxicity or overdose, and agents for opioid withdrawal. We also have agents for polyneuropathy, agents used in alcohol dependence, anti-smoking agents, anti-vertigo agents, and monoamine depleters. Moving on to gastroenterology drugs, we have gastric acid-related disorder agents, including peptic ulcer and GERD agents consisting of proton pump inhibitors, H2 antagonists, prostaglandin anti-ulcerants, and other agents for peptic ulcer and GERD. 
Antacids include antacids with sodium bicarbonate, antacids that are alumina-based, calcium-based, or magnesium-based. Laxatives include contact or stimulant laxatives, softeners or emollients, osmotically acting laxatives, both producers, other agents for constipation, chloride channel activators, and peripheral opioid receptor antagonists. There are also other agents for gastric acid related disorders. And then we have acidifying agents and alkalinizing agents. Antidiarrheals, intestinal anti-inflammatories, and anti-infective agents include antipropulsives, intestinal adsorbents, including bismuth products and charcoal products, and intestinal anti-infectives. Intestinal anti-inflammatory agents include aminosalicylic acid and related intestinal anti-inflammatory agents and corticosteroids, locally acting intestinal anti-inflammatory agents. We also have other antidiarrheals. Under agents for functional gastrointestinal disorder, we have agents for functional bowel disorder, including agents for functional gastrointestinal constipation disorders, consisting of chloride channel activators, guanylate cyclase C agonist, peripheral mu opioid receptor antagonist, and serotonin receptor agonist. Agents for irritable bowel syndrome include agents for constipation predominant IBS, consisting of guanylate cyclase C agonist, serotonin receptor agonist, and sodium hydrogen exchanger 3 inhibitors. Agents for diarrhea predominant IBS include antibiotics, peripheral mu opioid receptor agonist, and serotonin receptor agonist. For agents for short bowel syndrome, we have amino acids and glucagon-like peptide 2 analogs. There are also anticholinergic gastrointestinal antispasmodics, belladonna and derivative gastrointestinal antispasmodics, propulsives, and agents for carcinoid syndrome-induced diarrhea, including tryptophan hydroxylase inhibitors. There are also other agents for functional bowel disorders. Under antiemetics and antinauseants, we have motion sickness and antivertigo antiemetics, phenothiazine antiemetics, selective dopamine 2, dopamine 3 antagonist antiemetics, serotonin 5-HT3 antagonist antiemetics, cannabinoid antiemetics, miscellaneous antiemetics and antinauseants, and substance P neurokinin 1 antagonist antiemetics. Agents for obesity include adrenergic agonists, GLP-1 receptor agonist, lipase inhibitors, melanocortin-4 receptor agonist, and miscellaneous agents. Appetite stimulants include cannabinoids and other appetite stimulants. We also have antihemorrhoidal agents, bile and liver therapy, including bile acid agents, and Farnesoid X receptor agonists. Then we have chelating agents and mineral binders, including chelating agents and the mineral binding agents. For digestives, we have pancreatic enzymes. Moving on to respiratory drugs, we have agents for reactive and obstructive airway diseases, including beta-2 agonists, consisting of oral beta-2 agonists, parenteral beta-2 agonists, respiratory short-acting beta-2 agonists, and a respiratory long-acting beta-2 agonist. Respiratory muscarinic antagonists include respiratory short-acting muscarinic antagonist and respiratory long-acting muscarinic antagonist. Reactive and obstructive airway disease combinations include respiratory corticosteroids in combination with LAVAs and LAMAs, respiratory corticosteroids in combination with LAMAs, respiratory LAVAs in combination with LAMAs, and respiratory SABAs in combination with SAMAs. There are also leukotriene antagonists, mast cell stabilizers, xanthines, phosphodiesterase 4 inhibitors for reactive and obstructive airway diseases, respiratory corticosteroids, immunotherapies for reactive and obstructive airway diseases, and other agents for reactive and obstructive airway diseases. Systemic antihistamines include first-generation sedating antihistamines, second-generation non-sedating antihistamines, and other agents with antihistaminic action. Cough and cold agents include decongestants, expectorants, and mucolytics. Under respiratory anti-infectives, we have respiratory antibiotics, including respiratory aminoglycoside antibiotics and respiratory beta-lactam antibiotics. There are also respiratory antifungals and respiratory antivirals. Nasal agents include topical nasal anti-allergic agents, topical nasal anti-infectives, topical nasal corticosteroids, and topical nasal decongestants. 
Finishing off respiratory drugs, we have interstitial lung disease agents, including idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis agents, and interstitial lung disease associated with systemic sclerosis or scleroderma agents. Other respiratory system agents include cystic fibrosis agents, emphysema agents, lung surfactants, respiratory stimulants, and sclerosing agents. Moving on to endocrinology drugs, under anti-diabetic agents, we have blood glucose lowering agents excluding insulins, including biguanides, sulfonylureas that are first generation and second generation, glitazones, dipeptidyl peptidase 4 inhibitors, sodium glucose co-transporter 2 inhibitors, glucagon-like peptide 1 receptor agonist or incretin mimetics, alpha glucosidase inhibitors, amylin analogs, meglitonides, and other anti-diabetic agents. Under insulins and analogs, we have concentrated insulins with short and intermediate actions, concentrated long-acting human insulins and analogs, concentrated rapid-acting human insulins and analogs, short-acting human insulins and analogs, intermediate-acting human insulins and analogs, long-acting human insulins and analogs, and rapid-acting human insulins and analogs. Under systemic hormonal agents, we have thyroid therapy, including thyroid agents and antithyroid agents. For pituitary and hypothalamic hormones, there are hypothalamic hormones, including gonadotropin-releasing hormone receptor antagonist, gonadotropin-releasing hormone agonist, growth hormone receptor antagonist, and somatostatin and analogs. Pituitary hormones include ACTH and analogs and vasopressin and analogs. There are also systemic corticosteroids. Other hormones include antidiuretic hormones, calcitonins, glucagon, growth hormones, insulin-like growth factors, other hormones and agents with similar action, and parathyroid hormone analogs and modifiers. Agents for Cushing syndrome include cortisol synthesis inhibitors and glucocorticoid receptor antagonists. Under anabolic agents for systemic use, we have anabolic steroids, including androstan derivatives. For sex hormones and modulators of the genital system, we have androgens, antigonadotropins and similar agents, estrogens excluding hormonal contraceptives, progestogens, and estrogens with progestogen combinations excluding hormonal contraceptives. For hormonal contraceptives, we have emergency contraceptives and abortifacients, progestogen-only contraceptives, monophasic or fixed-dose contraceptives, including extended-cycle contraceptives, and monophasic contraceptives. There are also multiphasic or sequential contraceptives, including biphasic, triphasic, and four-phasic. Infertility agents include gonadotropins, other infertility agents, other ovulation stimulants, and selective estrogen receptor modulators. For urologicals, there are benign prostatic hypertrophy agents, or BPA agents, including 5-alpha reductase inhibitors and alpha blockers. For sexual dysfunction agents, there are erectile dysfunction agents, including phosphodiesterase inhibitors for ED and other agents for ED. For hypoactive sexual desire disorder agents, we have melanocortin receptor agonists for HSDD and multifunctional serotonin agonist antagonist for HSDD. There are also urinary analgesics and anesthetics, and urinary anti-infectives and antiseptics, including urinary antibiotics and other urinary antiseptics. Finishing off urologicals, we have urinary frequency and incontinence agents, including antimuscarinics and beta-3 adrenergic agonists. We also have cystinuria agents and all other urological agents. Gynecologicals include labor inducers and prolactin inhibitors. Under agents for disorders of the musculoskeletal system, we have agents affecting bone structure and mineralization, including agents targeting receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa B ligand, oral bisphosphonates, injectable bisphosphonates, and miscellaneous agents affecting bone structure and mineralization. We also have muscular dystrophy agents, or antisense oligonucleotides for muscular dystrophy, myasthenia gravis agents, and other myasthenic agents. For metabolic disorder agents, we have homocysteinuria agents, hyperammonemia agents, and lysosomal storage disorder agents, including cystinosis agents, Fabry disease agents, Gaucher's disease agents, mucopolysaccharidosis agents, 
pump and pump disease agents. There are also carnitine deficiency metabolic agents, PKU metabolism agents, tyrosinemia metabolism agents, other metabolic enzyme therapies, primary hyperoxaluria type 1 agents, and urea cycle disorder agents. Moving on to immunomodulation and inflammatory drugs. Keep in mind that a lot of the classes and drugs mentioned in this section are specialty drugs that you won't see as often. Starting off with inflammatory agents and anti-rheumatic agents, we have non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, COX-2 inhibitor non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, salicylate anti-inflammatory agents, and other anti-inflammatory and anti-rheumatic agents. Specific anti-rheumatic agents include anti-rheumatic monoclonal antibodies, gold compounds, and other specific anti-rheumatics. Topical musculoskeletal agents include topical NSAIDs and other topical musculoskeletal agents. Uricosuric agents include anti-gout agents and uricosuric recombinant enzymes. Agents that suppress the immune system include B lymphocyte stimulator inhibitors, C5 complement inhibitors, calcineurin inhibitors, cluster of differentiation or CD antigen inhibitors, including CD19, CD20, and CD52 antigen inhibitors. Agents that suppress the immune system also include aminoglobulin E inhibitors, insulin-like growth factor receptor inhibitors, interferon gamma inhibitors, interleukin-1, 1-beta, 17A, 2, 23, 4, 5, and 6 inhibitors, Janus-associated kinase inhibitors, mammalian target of rapamycin kinase inhibitors, phosphodiesterase-4 inhibitors, pyrimidine synthesis inhibitors, selective adhesion molecule inhibitors, spleen tyrosine kinase inhibitors, T-cell co-stimulation blockers, tumor necrosis factor alpha inhibitors, and other immunosuppressants. Under antineoplastics, we have alkylating agents including alkyl sulfonates, ethylene imines, nitrogen mustard analogs, nitrosurias, platinum compounds, and other alkylating agents. For anti-metabolite antineoplastic agents, we have folic acid analogs, purine analogs, pyrimidine analogs, and other anti-metabolites antineoplastic agents. For antineoplastic monoclonal antibodies, we have those targeting B-cell maturation antigen, those targeting CC chemokine receptor type 4, and those targeting cluster of differentiation or CD antigens, including CD19, 20, 22, 30, 33, 38, 52, and 79. We also have antineoplastic monoclonal antibodies targeting glycolipid disialoganglioside, antineoplastic monoclonal antibodies targeting growth factor receptors in their ligands, including EGFR. HER2-NEU, PDGFR, and VEGF. There are also antineoplastic monoclonal antibodies targeting nectin-4, antineoplastic monoclonal antibodies targeting receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa B ligand, antineoplastic monoclonal antibodies targeting trophoblast cell surface antigen 2, immunomodulator monoclonal antibodies including those targeting cytotoxic T lymphocyte antigen 4, those targeting interleukin-6, those targeting program death 1 and program death ligand 1 pathways, and those targeting signaling lymphocytic activation molecule family 7. We also have antineoplastic monoclonal antibody drug conjugates. Under antineoplastic plant alkaloids and other natural agents, we have camptothecin analogs, potophyllotoxin derivatives, and taxanes. There are also vinca alkaloids and analogs and other antineoplastic plant alkaloids and natural agents. And then we have antineoplastic retinoids, cytotoxic antibiotics and related substances including actinomycines, anthracinidiones, anthracyclines, and other cytotoxic antibiotics. Finishing off antineoplastics, we have methylhydrazines. Under small molecule antineoplastics, we have anaplastic lymphoma kinase inhibitors, B-cell lymphoma 2 inhibitors, BRAF kinase inhibitors, breakpoint cluster region Abelson inhibitors, Bruton's tyrosine kinase inhibitors, colony-stimulating factor 1 receptor inhibitors, cyclin-dependent kinase inhibitors, and DNA methyltransferase inhibitors. Epidermal growth factor receptor inhibitors include EGFR inhibitors, 
and HER2 and EU inhibitors. Small molecule antineoplastics also include easy H2 histone methyltransferase inhibitors, fibroblast growth factor receptor inhibitors, FMS-like tyrosine kinase 3 inhibitors, hedgehog pathway inhibitors, histone deacetylase inhibitors, interleukin 2 and 3 inhibitors, isocitrate dehydrogenase 1 and 2 inhibitors, Janus-associated kinase inhibitors, mammalian target of rapamycin inhibitors, mesenchymal epithelial transition inhibitors, mitogen-activated protein kinase inhibitors, multi-kinase inhibitors, nuclear export inhibitors, phosphatidyl nositol 3 kinase inhibitors, platelet-derived growth factor receptor inhibitors, poly-ADP ribose polymerase inhibitors, proteasome inhibitors, receptor tyrosine kinase C kit inhibitors, receptor tyrosine kinase ROS1 inhibitors, RET kinase inhibitors, tropomycin receptor kinase inhibitors, and vascular endothelial growth factor receptor inhibitors. Under cytostatic hormone therapy, we have cytostatic hormone agonists, including cytostatic estrogens, cytostatic progestogens, and cytostatic gonadotropin-releasing hormone agonists. For cytostatic hormone antagonist, we have cytostatic antiadrogens, including cytostatic androgen biosynthesis inhibitors, cytostatic androgen receptor antagonist, and cytostatic gonadotropin-releasing hormone antagonist. We also have cytostatic antiestrogens and cytostatic aromatase inhibitors. For immunomodulating agents, we have immunomodulators that are angiogenesis inhibitors and monoclonal antibodies, as well as sphingosin-1 phosphate receptor modulators. For immunostimulating agents, we have active cellular immunotherapies, including chimeric antigen receptor T-cell therapy and prostatic acid phosphatase T-cell therapy. Immunostimulating agents also include colony stimulating factors, interferons alpha, beta, and gamma, and interleukins. Moving on to the final section, infectious disease drugs. Under systemic antibiotics, we have aminoglycosides, amphenicol chloramphenicol antibiotics, beta-lactam antibiotics consisting of carbapenem antibiotics, cephalosporin antibiotics, including first generation, second, third, fourth, and fifth generation, cephalosporin and beta-lactamase inhibitor combinations, cytophore cephalosporin antibiotics, monobactam antibiotics, penicillin antibiotics, including extended spectrum, penicillinase resistant, penicillinase sensitive, and then we have fluoroquinolone antibiotics, glycopeptide antibiotics, imidazole derivative antibiotics, and lipopeptide antibiotics. We also have lincosamide antibiotics, ketolide antibiotics, macrolide antibiotics, nitrofuran derivative antibiotics, oxazolidinone antibiotics, pleuromutulin antibiotics, polymyxin antibiotics, rifamycin antibiotics, streptogramin antibiotics, sulfonamide antibiotics, trimethoprim and derivative antibiotics, sulfonamide and trimethoprim antibiotics, and tetracycline and tetracycline analog antibiotics, including natural and semi-synthetic tetracycline antibiotics, semi-synthetic aminoethylcycline antibiotics, semi-synthetic glycocycline antibiotics, and synthetic fluorocycline antibiotics. For antimycobacterials, we have agents for leprosy and agents for tuberculosis, including antibiotics for tuberculosis and other agents for tuberculosis. Gynecological anti-infectives include antibiotics and antifungals. For antiparasitic agents and insecticides, there are antihelminetics, including antinematodal agents and antitrematodal agents. For antiprotozoals, we have agents for amoebiasis and other protozoal diseases, agents for leishmaniasis and or trypanosomiasis, agents for toxoplasmosis, and antimalarials. There are also ectoparasitides, including scabicides. For systemic antifungals, we have azole antifungals, echinocandin antifungals, polyene antifungals, and other systemic antifungals. For antivirals for systemic use, we have herpes virus, including cytomegalovirus antivirals, consisting of non-nucleoside and nucleotide DNA polymerase inhibitors, cytomegalovirus non-nucleoside DNA terminase complex inhibitors, and non-nucleoside DNA polymerase inhibitors. 
Hepatitis antivirals include direct-acting antiviral agents for hepatitis C consisting of NS3-4A protease inhibitors, NSA5 protein inhibitors, and NS5B RNA polymerase inhibitors. There are also interferons for hepatitis B and C, and nucleoside and nucleotide analog antivirals for hepatitis B. HIV antivirals include integrase strand transfer inhibitors, non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, and nucleoside and nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitors. Combination HIV antivirals include integrase strand transfer inhibitors and non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor combinations, integrase strand transfer inhibitors and nucleoside and nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitor combinations, non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors and nucleoside and nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitor combinations, and nucleoside and nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitors combinations. There are also protease inhibitor and nucleoside and nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitor combinations and protease inhibitor combinations. Other HIV antivirals include HIV-1 entry inhibitors or fusion inhibitors and other agents using HIV including pharmacokinetic enhancers and protease inhibitors. There are also neuraminidase inhibitor antivirals, nucleoside RNA synthesis inhibitor antivirals, polymerase acidic endonuclease inhibitor antivirals, and respiratory syncytial virus antivirals. For topical antibacterials and antivirals, we have topical antibacterial agents including aminoglycosides, plain or in combination, topical polypeptide anti-infectives, plain or in combination, topical quinolones, topical sulfonamides, and other topical antibacterial agents. For topical antiviral agents, we have topical antivirals and other topical antiviral agents. Dermatological antifungals include systemic dermatological antifungals, topical dermatological antifungals, and topical scalp antifungals. Other dermatological agents include agents for hyperhidrosis or topical antiperspirants or drying agents, alopecia agents, depigmenting agents, facial hirsutism agents, photosensitizing agents, topical neuropathic pain agents, and topical scabicides. Acne agents include oral agents for acne, consisting of retinoids for acne and non-retinoids for acne. Topical agents for acne include anti-infectives, retinoids, peroxide agents, sulfur agents, and other topical agents. There are also rosacea agents that are oral or topical, humectants, topical antineoplastics that are topical antimetabolites or other topical antineoplastics. We have topical corticosteroids. And finally, we have non-steroidals for inflammatory skin disorders, including systemic anti-psoriasis agents, consisting of anti-psoriatic monoclonal antibodies and others, anti-psoriatic retinoids, and other systemic anti-psoriatics. And then we have systemic dermatitis monoclonal antibodies, topical dermatitis agents that are calcineurin inhibitors, topical anti-psoriasis agents, and topical scalp anti-inflammatories with corticosteroids. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching, and if you find this content helpful and would like similar content in the future, please like and share. Also consider subscribing and check out my other videos.